Welcome back, Dota 2 fans. Game 2, final series of the day, SG Esports taking on Sacred. Dota Summit 8, South America qualifiers. 1-0 lead for Sacred in this best of three. Winner moves on to face Infamous in the grand final BO5. A lot at stake here, SG. Staring down the barrel of defeat and a trip home. Well, I guess they're already home, but you know what I mean. A trip out of the tournament. <laughs> and Sacred, perhaps, maybe surprisingly to themselves even, are one game away from making it to the grand finals of this qualifier. Earth Spirit ban from SG. I guess it didn't pan out for them last game and don't want the opponents to have it with first pick. We'll ban the Wyvern as well. Night Stalker, Bane, Earthshaker. Might want to consider the Lich here. Might want to consider the Beastmaster as well. Um, Sacred can first pick the puck for Leo Style. He is an absolute monster on the hero. So we'll see what they end up going with. They, they pick the Lich for themselves. So once again, Masoku will pick that up. What is there to say about a lich pick, really? So, Bardo, the captain. It is, you know, I failed to mention earlier that the sacred were knocked down to the lower bracket by a Brazilian team, Pain. Now their chance to make it into the finals relies on them defeating a Brazilian team in SG. So Pride of Peru on the line here. Infamous awaiting in the finals or the victor of this match. Sand King Jakiro. Jakiro often considered, much like Lashrak was uh, in Game 1, a very good way to deal with the Lich Ice Armor. Liquid Fire, and in, I no longer care about your Ice Armor because one, I'm doing magic damage to your tower, and two, your tower's not hitting us all that much. Clockwork. So the Clockwork pick comes out for Sacred. Pretty big mana cost on the uh, Dual Breath early. If you can get a few cogs off, can really kind of hinder what Jakiro does in the lane. A big part of his pick is also his lane dominance with the uh, attack slow and move speed slow applied by the by, by, wow applied by the dual breath English. It actually is a very effective and rather I would say underrated at least or. Uh, can go overlooked tool in lane is the dual breath because both of the attack and move speed of your enemies are slowed. So Spirit Breaker rounded out the first phase bans. Arc Warden ban again from Sacred, so definitely has to be targeted here. Um, Life Stealer ban comes out from SG. Ben Jazz did enough on his Life Stealer last game, uh, and there again is the targeted, very targeted Leo style puck ban. Um, Surprised to not see Sacred put tons of, you know, in a game where you can potentially move to the Grand Finals, uh, tons of priority on the puck, you know, over something like the Clockwork. However, you know, it does give away your matchup very early. Um, it can open you up to picks like a Nyx Assassin. Um, So Sand King and Jakiro likely to be the support duo. And the profit the pick for Liposa once again. He kind of was the one bright spot in the lineup of SG in game one on his profit. 
Uh, so certainly has shown the propensity to play very well. Already, though, Clockwork, a pretty good way of dealing with the Prophet. Uh, you're not going to quite have the wave clear that you did in the previous game against the Treants, but you'll be able to catch this Prophet out. Presumably, anyways. Again, SG building a lineup, assembling a lineup that certainly has the ability to push down structures in the first few picks with the Liquid Fire and the Prophet. So sacred. Looking for likely what is going to be a second support. Weaver. And I'll actually pick up the Weaver, which has been banned quite a bit thus far. And it is a bit of a disabled light lineup for SG thus far. Um, Weaver can also, also just generally a very mobile hero, can kind of help the clockwork in chasing down his targets. Or traversing the map rather quickly in order to do so. Another way to keep vision on the Prophet as well with the Storm. Um, potentially a way to cancel Sand King Blinks with, with sh both Shikuchi and the Swarm. Um, but you have to have decent vision or be uh, a little bit fortunate in order to do that. So that's a bit more of an edge case, I would say. Anti-Mage Ban coming out from Sacred Side. Nobody wants to deal with that hero, despite the nerfs, it seems. Bardo contemplating his next pick and will reveal the Bloodseeker. So obvious for obvious reasons, great up against the Weaver. Pretty good against the damn Clockwork too. Um, you know, you cog yourself in. Bloodrite, it's going to land unless you have a, a Force Staff to immediately get yourself out. So really like the Bloodseeker pick here. Self-sufficient safe laner can allow the Sand King to roam. Um, it's, there's a possibility for him to go mid as well, although without poor man's shield, that could be you know, a little less. viable so both um, both lineups that have been assembled thus far have some certain pickoff potential sand king rome uh, bloodseeker is also a hero that wants to apply a lot of pressure with his early levels uh, and farm and Storm nature's profit can always tip into the tp in to tip the scales of an engagement with by providing extra numbers to his squad um, clockwork weaver pick off oriented storm very much so in the same vein going to be picked up for sacred uh, the difference between the two lineups the glaring difference right now is that um, other than the fact that there are different heroes <laughs> uh, that the radiant can push whereas sacred yeah, they'll get a Deso, you know, at some point on the Weaver, you would assume, but. Don't really have any typical building hitters. You know, Storm Spear, Weaver, similar idea in the fact that they both need to be locked down 
with free reign and team fights, they're both very effective. Um, Weaver is a bit susceptible to blade mail, however. We'll see if Bloodseeker goes that route. Queen of Pain ban coming out from Sacred. Taking that away from ADR and the Batrider ban from SG's side. Does feel like they need something in this last slot that can hit buildings or shove waves, and whether it be an Underlord or a Timber Saw. Timber Saw seems terrible in this game. Uh, let's just forget I said that. Um. But, you know, something of that nature that has the ability to push waves um, and that maybe can serve as a siege engine, at least tank the tower for the Weaver. All right. Faceless Void. It's a Faceless Void. Decent tank, often a Lincoln Sphere builder, especially against the uh, Bloodseeker. Uh, can time walk off damage, and there is, again, we're a bit disabled light on the Radiant side, and that's why this Tricor of Weaver, Storm Spirit, Faceless Void is slated to have a pretty good time. So it's a nice fifth pick. It's more likely going to force a, a Weaver Dragon Lance at some point, In the spirit. Um, just to, for him to be able to contribute into the Chrono, and SG will round out their lineup with the ADR Ember Spirit. All right, guys, we're staring down elimination on SG Esports' side. We'll see if they can take this to a deciding game three, or if they will be dropped from the tournament and Sacred will move on to face Infamous in the finals. So, Papita, of course, Argentinian, is the captain of... Infamous, but the remainder of the team, Excel, Schofield, Stinger, Kotaro, are all Peruvian. So we would have, if uh, Sacred were to make it through, uh, we would have a 9 out of 10 player Peruvian South American final. We'll see if the Pride of Peru can uh, propel these boys forward or if Brazil takes back some of theirs. All right, can we get the game on pause, boys? Boish. Yeah, I got some pretty cosmetics, you know. Sometimes we want to look at the pretty cosmetics, but there's Dota to be played. Hope you guys have enjoyed your Saturday so far. Uh, and apologies that I couldn't bring a, a co-caster along with me uh, for this ride. But I've got some in the works. Your boy Franzi uh, just started managing uh, an undisclosed North American team. So it's a little bit harder to pin down as far as cast go. But I've been talking to a few players recently and hopefully can get some of them who uh, dabble in the casting bit. All right. I... One of the shorter pauses. This game... Uh, I should mention, guys, game one on Brazilian servers, Sacred, the Peruvian team, won. This game on Peruvian servers, so slight advantage, Radiant, as far as ping. It feels, though, as if SG are a lot more comfortable coming out of this draft as far as their player hero combinations as far as their overall strategy so we'll see if king Tekka can perform oh. to the standard he set for himself in game one as a leo style gonna do a little jig Train's trying to get some scouting information out for Liposa, and they probably caught Matthew. So they may want to contest this top rune. They're certainly thinking about it. Theo walking up, and yep, King Tech is not even going to try. 
Leo style will waltz back as well. TP in towards mid lane where he'll be blocking up the creeps. Similarly, ADR TP's over. Looks like he used his flame guard bottom. Matthew's just fine. Used the cogs. Oh, he burned his mana with the cogs. Okay. Soku beginning in the mid lane, gonna take away the range creep from ADR. Throw a few right clicks onto that Ember Spirit as well. Meanwhile, top lane, King Taka could be in a little bit of trouble here as he's gonna get pincered in. Dual Breath will land. And Burrow Strike is available, but he'll just time walk away. Burrow Strike pretty low range at level 1, and time walk, you know, barely able to get him out of that pickle. Matthew beginning bot lane. We already touched upon the Lich mid. And, you know, Weaver can be harassed by the tree ends, but being ranged uh, should be okay for the most part. Going to aggress forward onto Liposa's Prophet, and you can see the tree ends actually doing more damage to Benjaz than Benjaz was putting out. It's just certainly not worth it uh, to try and trade with this Prophet, at least until you have a couple levels in the Shikuchi and the cooldown's a bit lower. ADR taking a lot of harass mid lane. He does have a salve on his person. And they'll drop down a sentry as well, Masoku. Trying to cancel that salve, stepped forward. And now Theo on the opposite side of the river could be in a little bit of trouble. Slowed up, overload charge will be there. One more right click needed, and yes, nicely played. As he throws out the right click, gets the static remnant on, off in the air. And Leo style will grab himself a kill here. Frostblast going to go out onto ADR. And he's going to take a relatively large amount of harass as well. Level 2, or... Minute two, excuse me. Um, rune for ADR is unfortunately bottom lane and is a DD. Masoku gonna camp that for his squad. And we'll see if Leo Style wants to grab it up. No, he'll just grab it. Leo Style says, Don't worry about it, dude. My bottle's just on the way. Or my boots are just on the way. No bottle for me yet. And having a good time in the mid lane. Meanwhile, the Bloodseeker, speaking of which, having a great time top. 10 denies against the Void. That is a... Feels bad, man. Both both heroes with a uh, stout shield. No more poor man's shield in the game. Content to do a bit of trading with one another. As King Tekka will be forced to salve up. And the Jakiro rotating in. Now Theo once again in towards the mid lane. TP inbound from Liposa. And not much Masoku can do about this. Nicely placed Sprout is going to bounce back to Storm Spirit. Matthew with the cogs actually gets ADR within tower range. Battery Assault is there as well. Uh, and he does end up getting the magic stick off. They'll kill the Sand King, however. Now TP's back from the Storm Spirit in the mid lane. Of course, he does not have ball lightning at this point in the game. But the cogs should bounce back Liposa. They indeed do. Uh, they leave Matthew a little bit vulnerable here. And he will be taken down in his own cogs. Uh, and they actually can't get a kill on Liposa despite TPing back into the lane for Leo style. So a nice little set of happenstances for the SG side. As they'll grab a couple of kills for one in the mid lane. I always find it so hard how sometimes long drawn out engagements like that. Fight recap catches it all. And sometimes what seem to be shorter... I have only a kill or two caught. Theo spending some time bottom lane uh, as the Prophet TP'd out. Time is money. Trying to get his levels up. Soku once again, again back mid. ADR's level progression pretty darn bad against the Lich. And a big reason why you picked this hero uh, is just to keep that enemy mid laner at bay. And they've certainly done so with ADR. Getting, without that kill on the Storm Spear, he'd be even further behind. They blow up the Flame Guard pretty quickly here. Overload will be missing uphill, but the next one will connect. Theostal will cop a hit from the tower for his troubles. And really, maybe the one concerning thing in the early game for the Radiant is Benjaz's CS is a bit low, five minutes in. Um, averaging about 5 CS a minute, where, you know, in an uncontested safe lane, 8 CS a minute is more than attainable. 
And perhaps I'm assuming and saying uncontested, but he certainly didn't seem very contested. Meanwhile, Liposa is going to get bounced. Sh uh, swarm, not Swarm, uh, is going to be there. And Liposa will get underneath his tower to safety. Uh, albeit barely. He does have a couple of tangos, and with the Treants just spawning, can just retreat to the jungle like this. Has the shrine available as well, but no need just yet. Level 6 on the Bloodseeker. He's the first in the game to hit that milestone. And the always scary Rupture is part of his toolkit now. TP out is going to have to be the play for the Void if he gets ruptured up. No Ice Path just yet on the Jakiro. We'll get clipped by the Dual Breath. Uh, King Tekka, that is. Seeds and Blood Rage on the Siege Creep actually get a decent amount of damage done to this tower and they'll continue to keep the wave pushed in utilizing that liquid fire um, but wisely so King Tekka drags the wave well behind the tower uh, such that the heroes can't put any more punishment into it Benjaz Actually queued up treads here, very uh, uncommon for Weaver in general. Um, it may be worth considering with the new mana break and uh, the little bit of extra attack speed that it provides. But definitely uncommon. In fact, with a Glove of Haste in his inventory, Midas would be more common than power treads. But he'll pick him up here. Denied. He's got his level 6 mark as well, and the Void working on it slowly. Leo Style soon to have that ball lightning. And actually, ADR has caught up relatively nicely. Opposites in wondrous harmony. No, 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 no. And Lane Frost Blast goes out onto ADR. A couple of right clicks are there as well. They're going to force the Flame Guard out here, and it's going to get burned. Nope, not entirely through. Uh, and ADR will be able to walk away. Meanwhile, Liposa picks off Matthew Bottom alongside his Sand King. And they even rotate in the Bloodseeker for this one. Benjaz, though, unthreatened. And first attempt before the Ember Spirit hits level 6 is going to be a futile one for the Storm Spirit. They do want to keep pressuring him before he gets that kind of jet out, get out of jail free card, though. I'll take your true school, give it. Looking for me. Theo style picking up the regen. He'll bottle that up and can press forward the for Theo, um, but does get disjointed. His attack disjointed with the uh, sandstorm there. Uh, he'll be just fine to back up. He has a regen rune available. Can think about going in on ADR mid. Big ball lightning could do a lot of damage here. Meanwhile, I'm an idiot. Bot lane Matthew went in and they found the kill on the blood seeker. Oh boy, guys. I thought this is where the action would be as Flame Guard is going to be forced out by uh, Leo style onto ADR. Really, no damage taken by either tower uh, to speak of in the mid lane. Chronosphere is available for Vatos Loco or King Tekka. Liposa is working on perhaps a set of drums. It's just got the one robe. Ah, so just straight into the orchid. Okay. Got that queued up. Didn't look at the quick buy there. Very even game in this game too overall thus far. Um, considering how well the Bloodseeker farmed though, like you look at the gap in CS, it's actually not that wide anymore. Um, but he is a bit lower after that death than maybe you would want him to be ideally. Top lane Liposa going to force back the Faceless Void, who does have a TP and a Chronosphere for this bottom lane. 
Dire vision Time though. Money. Uh, should be able to scout his TP in. Or at least him walking out of the trees if that were to happen. Looking to uh, surmount level 8 here. And actually going for the Battle Fury on the Void is no, King Tekka. So looking to scale. And we certainly know that, that there is potential for carry Void back with the extra time walk distance. Um, and the the uh, backtrack available, the 100 time walk damage. You don't need to build into a blink anymore, which is nice. They're bringing in the Clockwork top lane. Jump forward. Just going to try and... Well, they get the blood right off. It's actually going to silence the Void. They'll get the stun. It's really too early, though, from Matthew. And now that these three heroes are in trouble, they'll try to TP out on the Void. Will be successful in doing so. So all that's lost is a Chrono. It's a massive rotation from SG to save their Bloodseeker. And I suppose you could call that a slight win for Sacred uh, as they're farming elsewhere. But it is a big cooldown off the board. Two minutes, no chrono, and uh, one minute, no hookshot. And in fact, SG are just going to take this opportunity to take the tier one top and maybe even poke at the tier two. ADR also farming up a stack. Matthew, oh, Rocket yeah. Flare. And it'll at least prevent them from continuing to press forward in this bottom lane. Ben Jazz is at about 58% HP of this tower bot lane, so... Nothing to write home about. As TP's being queued up mid lane, Leo will just zip to the other side. ADR, no points in the Slight of Fist, so Slight Chains, not a possibility from range for him. Benjaz does go for the Dragonlance. I kind of alluded to this in the in the draft screen. It's just better like with the Void that you have the extra range, so you can throw some damage into Chrono, especially when you don't have something like, you know, a Zeus or a Clinx or an OD uh, that can really dump damage. Or even a macro power for that reason. Into that chrono. Ben has just by Liposa and the Bloodseeker of Costabil. And he'll make his way as the scan is there and successful for the Radiant. Down into the safety of his trees. He'll TP up towards top lane. And looks like they'll look to trade rather slowly, however. This top lane tower with Treants being here. Luposa will make quick work of this. They even have the liquid fire on the back end. Meanwhile, ADR does get the Lich mid lane, and he's put down a defensive remnant. So, with the Arcane Rune, he's more than willing to continue to press. Benjaz working on the uh, tower alongside King Tekka. Doesn't have a Blightstone here on the Weaver, so this is a bit slow. And just outside of deny range is this tower. Meanwhile, bottom lane with the Liquid Fire and the Nature's Prophet SG pushing into a tier 2. TP in from the Void. He does have the Chronosphere available. And can think about jumping forward. Storm Spirit nearby as well. Will look to take out all these Treants and find himself a nice bounty of gold. Big rotation coming in from SG though. From the north side, Theo looking for someone. He'll find the Void. Bloodrite is there as well. He has to drop the Chrono because of it. Now jumping forward to kill off the Sand King is the Storm Spirit. They get the Void though in the meantime. Leo Style takes a big nuke from the Triple Fire Remnant. And Benjaz has not joined this fight yet. He will now TP right in front as the uh, Sentry Ward goes down. And they will catch him with the Searing Chains. Asoku unable to cancel the TP of the Ember Spirit. And they'll cause the Benjaz rotation. They'll force out the Chrono. And when all is said and done, it's a one-for-one one Sand King for Faceless Void. Where the Void was certainly worth more than the Sand King. Uh, so overall, big win for SG. Uh, they put the tower down to 20% HP. Or just over 10% HP, I should say. Just outside of Denai range. So all working out for them in that bottom lane push. Still working on this Battle Fury is King Tekka and he is nowhere near picking it up. Isley Posa snags his bounty rune. He is quite near a Orchid here, about 550-ish gold away. Maelstrom actually picked up by Costa. Uh, so interesting pick there will help them to kind of continue to push the lanes going forward he's gonna get hooked up though there's blood rage on him as well he's in a lot of trouble here and will be brought down before 
anyone can support him. Chain Frost will bounce, bounce twice. ADR in trouble here. One more right click. Will it bring it down? It does. Leo style gets a kill. Dominating streak for Liposa though as he takes out the Lich and TPs away. But they get the Sand King. Double kill for the Clockwork. And overall a 3 for one they do get the mid lane tower in the meantime with Bardo. Zip4 though, speaking of Bardo, looking to find the Jakiro here. They get the pullback. Oh, they needed that right click to hit uphill. And they need a little more as well. He'll stick up, but the overload is there from Leo style. Sorry, you guys had to watch that with the fight recap up. But didn't want to miss it when I tried to uh, click. So, Benjaz working on a Lincoln Sphere. As opposed to going the more damage oriented route with something like a Deso. And against the Rupture. It makes sense. You can't really fight if you're ruptured as Weaver. I rely a lot on moving at max movement speed, so. Posa did debut the Orchid there, but only getting the Lich kill. Certainly subpar for the course. Surprised the Clockwork doesn't have a little more farm here. Level 8, 3, 2, and 4 on the clock. Been involved in 7 of his 8 team kills. And now in trouble here. Chronosphere going to be popped by King Tekka. Liposa going to be time dilated. Orchid goes out onto the void. Ben has trying to engage here and he'll wait for his Storm Spirit to jump and get a big kill onto the Nature's Prophet. Blood Rite is going to be there, but Matthew's already got Battery Assault going. They'll finish off the Jakiro as well. And now Ben has, even though ruptured up, should be able to help kill off Costa Beal here. He is. Sand King nearby. They'll just drop the remnants on him and he'll try to walk down to the south. But zip forward from Leo style. A couple more right clicks. Ben has is there. Uphill miss. Zip. One more right click, mega kill for Leo Sal. Sacred looking sharp here, 12 to 6. As despite their chrono, you know, not netting kills instantly, it completely thwarted the initiation attempt from SG. And they were all oddly positioned here with the Prophet on one side, the Ember outside the chrono, the Jakiro outside the chrono, and the chrono doing one of these kind of things. Uh, and then they isolate the Prophet over this way. Ember Spirit comes in, doesn't have a defensive remnant prepared, and they punish heavily here. Big engagement for Sacred. Orchid goes out mid lane onto the Storm Spirit. He could be in a little bit of trouble. Macropire is there. They're queuing up the Epicenter, but he gets out in time, and that's an Epicenter down for SG. Now Rupture going to go out onto the Lich, who looks to TP out and should be able to do so. Nicely played by Masoku. And Matthew will commend him for it on the clockwork. Now up on the high ground with a hook shot and a rocket flare at the ready. Radiant Vision isn't great here. And they will see the clockwork now. Looks for the hook shot on Jakiro. Isn't able to, to land, unfortunately. And Battle Fury is up and ready now for King Tekka. Zip forward from the Storm Spirit. He's going to find the Jakiro alongside Ben Jazz. And. Just a perseverance away from the Lincoln Sphere now is the Weaver. Leo Style having a day right now on his Storm Spirit. 7 1 and 4 zips forward. Blood Rage up on Costabile and they get the pullback. Huge kill. Double kill for Leo. Not sure who was low to uh, make the Bloodseeker walk that fast, but they'll get that kill as well. And this Storm Spirit has just been absolutely playing out of his mind since picking up the uh, Yules and the Kaya. Liposa trying to make it out. One hit doesn't even land. Never mind the bash. But still, in a good control of this game now, Sacred. 5k net worth lead and a 10k experience lead for the underdogs in this series. Already up 1 to nil. And kind of spoke about in the first series today, momentum and how much playing games matters. And SG did not play as many games to get here as did Sacred. Perhaps that kind of lack of practice rearing its ugly head here for SG. SG, though, much like in Game 1, are going to look to steal the Roshan. And it'll likely cost them a Tier 2 here. Um, but they should get it. Sacred playing rather tentative. And unbeknownst to them, yeah, they will rocket flare the pit now. And unfortunately, it will be a little bit too little too late. They are teeping in though with the Storm Spirit. 
He does want to fight here. Zipping forward is Leo style. He gets rooted though. Burrow struck up as well, and he essentially just feeds as he'll drop. Swarm now flying through. Very odd play from the Storm Spirit. Seven times kill streak going the way of the Ember Spirit. And he's on the sidelines for 45 seconds. You see a lot of low heroes, and you 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 know you get your eyes widened a bit. But that's just not the play from Liposa. Really feeling himself there. And unlikely to be feeling himself any longer after that attempt. Time is money. Yasha completed up for the void. They have a chronosphere. Liposa's a pretty big kill. They might want to just expend it here. Matthew though gets the hook shot from the wayward side, beautifully played, and he'll cog him back as well. Chrono will be there to ensure the kill, but it actually stops Matthew dead in his tracks. Burl Strike comes out onto the faceless void. He can't time walk away from this. And now trying to find him is ADR. One second until the time walk. He's rooted though. Ice Path is there. Gets it off. Looks for the TP out. Couple of right clicks. Will it be enough? It is with the root. Ooh, that was close and almost made it out. But reaction is there in time and it's going to be a profit for a void when all is said and done. Benjaz, though, in the meantime, completes up his Lincoln Sphere. That's in base and should be delivered to him shortly. And he's queued up a Maelstrom. Meanwhile, Rupture onto Masoku. Uh, he actually catches the blood right, so a bit of a misplay from him there trying to walk just outside of the periphery. Leo style working on a bloodstone has the soul ring maybe he forgot soul ring not part of bloodstone right i think i just out yeah okay i thought i just out thought myself there but yes soul ring is no longer <laughs> part of bloodstone <laughs> Still no uh, blink dagger now just picked up by the Theo. Stupendous. Sand King. Working on a manta is the void up against the silence of both the prophet's orchid and uh, the blood right. Leo style top lane continuing to farm away 2300 gold on his person meanwhile mid lane they are gonna go in and they will find a target right away Theo though chain frost bouncing through is gonna kill him off with the blade mail doing work and a beautiful bounce from the chain frost between the two cores of SG they still don't even have a storm fear and he just now joins the fray ADR is in a lot of trouble here but Leo style is relatively low on mana he zips forward now still looking for more gets the kill onto the ember spirit and the Bloodseeker in trouble as well. They get him with the Weaver. Benjaz continuing to press. Is going to get the Swarm off onto the Jakiro. They should find him as well. And not sure how that fight goes so disastrously in the mid lane. But the Blade Mail from, from Matthew seemed to do work there. A lot of damage dealt by the Weaver. Uh, and, you know, 1,500 or so by the clock. You can see the Storm Spirit didn't do all that much there. Got to the fray rather late, but it's a huge swing in the Radiant favor. And teeping into the shrine was Liposa. He's going to try and push this wave out bottom to prevent, you know, any objective taking from Benjaz and Co. Benjaz Lincoln Sphere up and has enough for a Mithril Hammer after creep kill here. ADR as a Kaya of his own to go with his Veil. So has still gone the kind of magic damage route as far as talents go. Arms for the dead. And grab some 10% spell amp. This used to be 15% spell amp at level 10. <laughs> it is now 10% at level 20. <laughs> Oh, that just goes to show you how broken that was initially. I'm over here. Tipping oh, forward into the mid lane, Leo style is still a good ways away from the full bloodstone. 
Theo going to do a decent job getting some aggressive vision down for his squad. And ADR under the cover of an invisibility rune. Could perhaps catch a glimpse of Benjaz. Near Theo now. Swarm going to fly out. They don't abs uh, They don't end up getting it off. Rooted up. Oh, and a big Wrath of Nature. And he whiffs the chrono completely for King Tekka. Not sure what he thought he was going to grab there. But he may just die as well. Theo actually blinking to the wrong side of the trees. Meanwhile, Masoku gets a kill on Liposa? Huh? Alright, well, I'm not missing this bottom lane for it. Hookshot is going to find the Sand King. They'll cog him up as well. Bloodlight, Bloodlight will be there. And it actually silences the Storm Spirit who balls in to the blood right rocket player is going to be there there's a negative earn tick on the sand king but i don't think it'll kill him off just yet mana break is there onto adr he zips out blood right going to be there and will connect onto the weaver they do have a shrine however and we'll pop it before pressing forward storm spirit able to dodge up uh, the ice path and now jump forward time dilation not going to connect on anything and could you imagine had they had chrono for that fight how well it goes for sg somehow the lich solo kills uh the prophet top lane which is absolutely incredible i'll take your tribute and benjaz will do some farming here under the cover of smoke sg looking to find some blood and it will be the king tech void they will find Meanwhile, the Sand King looking to find more as Matthew hung around. He'll get the hookshot off onto the west side. Good communication between him and Leo style. And the Rocket Flare going to scout out the entire SG lineup. Cancel some blinks as well. Nicely played by Leo style and Matthew to stifle the bleeding there. But with this Battle Fury, I mean, even despite that death, Void has scaled nicely. He's looking to finish up his Manta relatively soon. Just needing the ultimate orb and... Um, he is, you know, keeping pace with the tr entire tricore of the enemy team. Leo style, not too far off. Just about 350 gold. Uh, his bloodstone. Can sell the wand or, or bottle if he'd like. In order to pick it up. Whoa, what I miss? And this should be enough. There it is. He'll pick up the Perseverance instead of from the side. Man, Leo Style's got to read some patch notes, dude. First, he buys a Soul Ring. Doesn't need it for Bloodstone. Then he buys Perseverance from the base when he's standing right here. I don't know, man. Need a Spanish version of the patch notes. <laughs> Just kidding, guys. All right, jumping forward. They're going to find one. That's going to... Oh, and they get the Chrono onto two. The Storm Spirit is caught in it as well. But with the Chain Frost, they'll kill them off easily. That's a Bloodseeker and the Sand King down. Now Liposa in trouble. Leo Style still with a full mana pool there. They'll bring down the Prophet. And Sacred take three kills. Roshan not spawning for two minutes. Fortunately for SG. Else that could have been ripe for the taking for Sacred. But Leo Style already in towards the mid lane. Alongside King Tekka. Taking out one wave. Leo Style takes out the other. They'll push in towards mid. Benja is going to push out bottom lane. 17 stick. Uh, blood, not stick. Bloodstone charges now. For the Storm Spirit. And they are sitting on his remnant currently. <laughs> this is just... <laughs> I'm trying to keep Silent Hero Stalemate. Oh, 40R. They want to trade with him. They'll zip forward. And... Okay. That was easy. One brother murders another. As Leo Style takes out the Ember Spirit. I thank you. Trying to cut the wave desperately is Liposa. Um, but it feels like they'll have what it takes to protect their wave here with King Tech in front. Meanwhile, Liposa, he never stops here. Le uh, Tho Le uh, Theo in trouble. Nice hook shot and a bounce back from Matthew. Beautifully played. Rocket Flare gives him the vision. Overload charge. Kills him off. Double damage rune as well. Leo style just feeling absolutely... Unkillable here. Unbridled aggression from the Storm Spirit. 
He has a TP in his backpack if he wants to look to take out the Prophet, but he's going to do so. Manta style is there for King Tekka, and he gets the Chrono off onto two. It's going to keep back the Bloodseeker. Now a huge zip forward. Leo style needs to get out of the silence, but a couple more right clicks. Finish off the Jakiro. Bash is there onto the Nature's Prophet. Swarm going to connect on the uh, Bloodseeker as well. Matthew nearby. Oh, he gets rooted up. Nice slight change by 40R, but now he's in trouble as well. Blood right almost killing off Matthew. They need to get him back to base, else there's going to be a lot of thirst on the Bloodseeker here, who is moving rather quickly, as if he's shikuchi right now. But again, SG, or Sacred, excuse me. You know, take an engagement and don't lose anything on the back end. It's been very clean from them all game long. Mjolnir f completed up by Benjaz. You can throw that on his, his Void, his Clockwork, maybe most relevant target for that uh, static charge. You can also throw it on the Storm Spirit who will be kind of in the middle of the fights. Bottom lane, Chronosphere not available for a good while here. Uh, so ADR is not entirely threatened, but he feels it, as you can tell, zipping out there. And 14k gold lead, 15k experience lead for Sacred Side. They are looking strong in this one against the Brazilian SG squad. All right, Matthew going to smoke up alongside his Void. Really the only two people they need to smoke. Lich is certainly going to be in the back lines. Weaver can Shikuchi into the fray. Uh, and Leo Style can be there from any point on the map, as we've seen. 21 Bloodstone charges. Kaya in hand. A lot of regen and just not all that much mana cost in general. <laughs> Immortality is mine! Storm Spirit's got the Aegis. Cheese in the hands of Ben Jazz's Weaver. There's a Glimmer Cape on Masoku as well. And nothing else as far as big item pickups. ADR has picked up a Maelstrom on the Ember, but his problem has not been damage output. Uh, and you understand why he picks it up here to be able to cut waves and push them out, but uh, his problem has more been survival thus far. No defensive items in his inventory currently. Jump forward. Chronosphere is going to catch two. They're going to be able to take out at least ADR's Ember Spirit. Chain Frost going to bounce through. They get the Jakiro as well. Two heroes down. 50 seconds plus. Neither with buyback. And a decisive move from King Tekka will garner them enough to get this Rax at, at least. As Leo Style and King Tekka and Ben Jazz begin to beat into these buildings... Bottom lane, of the tier 3 being threatened slightly. Matthew with the Rocket Flare is in the neighborhood looking for the Prophet. And the rest of Sacred working on the tier 3 top lane there. Well aware there are no buybacks at this point. And we'll get two lanes out of that one Chrono, essentially. They, they do lose backdoor prote uh, due to backdoor protection top. They will... Likely lose the Void here as well. Actually, he is able to time walk down to the low ground, and they find the Bloodseeker. This could just be game here, guys, as BKBs are popped, but he goes down. 66 seconds on the sidelines. Now the time dilated the Sand King in trouble. He's going to be dropped, and then Lee Posa TPs right into the fray. Epicenter being channeled on the high ground from Theo. Jumps down with a big magic damage nuke from the uh, Spirits. They do end up getting... The Ben Jazz Weaver. He could have bought back time lapse in, but they'll be more than happy with what they've got so far. And Leo Style will get the hell out of Dodge. As they get two lanes of racks. And do they force out any buybacks? Yes, the Sand King, of course, from Theo as he died. Buyback began to channel Epicenter. A massive win for Sacred there and heavily on the back foot is SG Esports. Here. 
I don't even know what happened there, man. I don't even know. Diffusal Blade picked up by King Tekka. And Sacred obviously feeling good, as the chat wheel is indicative of, and the taunts from Leo, who is 18, 2, and 9 on the Storm Spirit. I'm going to check this out before the game even ends. 636 GPM, 730 XPM. Benja is near that mark as well. So looking to go in on Theobot lane. Jump forward. They get the bash after the time walk. Ice Path will be there, but so will the hook shot. And they'll hook up Theo. He may be able to blink out in just a second. Jump forward from BKB. Chronosphere finds one. That is going to be the Nature's Prophet. He's going to be taken out. And a big old zip finds them a second kill as well onto the Sand King. Now they'll find a fourth. That's the Jakiro and the Bloodseeker. Cogged up. BKB not going to help you here, friend. As he's brought down five heroes on the sidelines. Tier 2 still standing bottom lane. And that is the only thing keeping SG from GGing out at this point. But already pushing in is Benjaz. And yep, yeah, they realize their fate is sealed. Liposa who's played well today, but unfortunately ends up 0-2, will throw in the towel for his squad, and SG, the Brazilian squad, eliminated by Peru, as 9 of 10 of the players in the finals, grand finals for this qualifier will be from Peru, and Pepita from Argentina captaining uh, the opponents for Sacred. Sacred looking really sharp in this second game. Uh, in a game where no one had a clear draft advantage, you know, at least in, in my scrub opinion, uh, they they sh shine all game long. Um, really nicely played overall uh, by Leo Style. Even Matthew getting work done in the early game involved in 21 kills, but 22 and 11 on the Storm Spirit. And not a single hero with a positive KDA on SG Esports side. I hope you enjoyed the cast today, guys. On behalf of Beyond the Summit, I am More Rage Please, your resident Canadian Dota 2 caster. It's been a blast. We'll be back tomorrow for the best of five grand finals. Let me just dig up the time that's happening at. Um, and that will be 4 p.m. EST, 1 p.m. PST, 22 CET. Uh, so definitely be sure to come back and check that out tomorrow, guys. It is going to be infamous versus sacred. Let the fun begin indeed. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed the cast. If you did, you can follow me over on Twitter at MRP Dota. See anytime I go live. If not, tweet angry things at me or make a Reddit thread, right? That's, I feel like that's what you do. Okay, guys. It's been good. GG. See you next time.